This is not April's. This is March's. So March's fish vault showed up at my door yesterday afternoon. Uh, I did a quick video. I posted it up around midnight, one o'clock in the morning. I really don't know, uh, but uh, edited it real quick and threw it up for you all to know what was going on with our fish vault elite. Well, during that period of time, I checked my emails and I got a confirmation email that in transit, unbeknownst to me, was this, Fish Vault. Lo and behold, the April, the elusive April, and to me the more important Fish Vault uh, so far of my Fish Vault boxes. So uh, real quick recap with all the things that happened with the pandemic uh, last season. Um, shipping being a, a pain in the butt, uh, supply chain issues across the board for all of the different bait and tackle subscription boxes. And me being who I am, I wanted to give uh, like a high-end uh, retail, high-end shipping box to your door of fishing gear, tackle, what have you. Angler's Hall, which was a subsidiary of, of uh, Hunter's Hall, was fitting the bill actually quite nicely. I've, I've so far had not been uh, unimpressed by an Angler's Hall overall. But with Angler's Hall, from what they started off with, with great uh, transparency, interactions, they had, their, um, they had their feeds on social media, you could interact with them on you know, Twitter, um, as well as on Instagram. Um, they just went silent, radio silence. I got billed twice, no boxes showed up, they refunded the money for those boxes, said that they went on pause. So they stopped shipping for a short, a short brief period of time. The new season came. I've been billed for Angler's Hall a while ago, let's be honest. And I haven't seen hide nor hair nor heard anything, not seen an, uh, an email as to an expected shipment date. With all that going on with Angler's Hall, I found this fish vault package. Uh, I had my reservations about it because I knew from their hunt vault, it all became Angler's Hall. This is fish vault. Fish vault, it was hunter's vault, became or Hunt Vault became Fish Vault. Um, there was, in the first two boxes that I received, a very obvious shot towards taking camping gear that's found in their Hunt Vault, taking hunting equipment that's found in their Hunt Vault, adding it in, and then throwing one or two items that are angler-ish, angler-esque, um, and calling it a Fish Vault. Last month, that box uh, that I received in April... Uh, last month's box had a fish fillet knife, definitely sea, uh, you know, seafaring, um, and then it had one other item-ish and, and a package of wipes that were marine-grade wipes, kind of, but it, it focused more on, I mean, it had a good flashlight that was definitely fishing marine, um, but there was items in there that just weren't really angler-specific. This box in April touted a very specific item. That being a Garmin uh, fish finder, depth finder. So it's not a top of the line Garmin. I think it's their hook two or hook four. I don't really recall. I will uh, put up, if I can figure out how to put up pictures, I'll put up some photos of what they advertised. Uh, and then you can zoom in on the photo and, or pause the video and see in the photo. Uh, which version they were supposed to get. I'm assuming I'm not going to get like the top of the line, latest Garmin uh, small fish finder. Obviously by the size of the package here, you can tell it's a small, uh, I guess probably like a six inch screen maybe, I would assume. I don't know what's in here yet. We're aiming to find out. That all being said, 
I wanted to make sure, I wanted to make sure that uh, you and I both get to peruse this firsthand. As always, I don't open these boxes ahead of time. Um, I wait and I crack open them on camera so that there's no bias reaction. I don't get a real chance to, uh, you know, know what's coming in the box and research per se. I have an inkling of what's supposed to be here by what they advertise uh, being the Garmin thing. I don't know whatever else they might put in here. I'm hoping that they do a far bit better than the first two boxes and there's more fishing uh, stuff. However, we will find out. So, first impressions. Oh, anticlimactic. <laughs> okay, so unlike the last one, they went with the paper. Let's see, what's under the tissue paper? Oh, oh, there went our card. And right off the bat, there we go, there's our fish finder. So indeed, we did get our, our uh, Garmin. Oh, it's a Striker 4. Okay, so it's a Garmin Striker 4. Uh, definitely an older gen. But uh, fish vault right there. Garmin is the um, preem you know preeminent uh, brand that they're focusing on for April 2021 collection. We have Fuzi Cold Steel Duke Cannon and Peak Refuel. Peak Refuel. Peak Refuel. <laughs> All right, we'll get to that. That's on the bottom. Um, that this again will coincide with their Hunt Vault packages. All right, so we'll start off right off the top. Number one. The Garmin Striker 4 Fish Finder, which is something that I was looking forward to. So indeed, we've got an old generation. It's not certainly not the newest and, and greatest. You're not going to find that, um, you know, a brand new item uh, in, a, in a box set like this anyway. Uh, that being said, this is a nice little unit, a uh, beginner's unit for a kayak fisherman or a small John Boat fisherman. Um, it should come with the, it better come with the transducer. Yes, includes dual beam transducer with chirp. Uh, it's a low kilohertz. You've got 77 and 200 kilohertz. Not by any means the most powerful. I think, you know, nowadays we're looking at like 800, 900 kilohertz, I think, on, on the upper echelon garments and, and, uh, and what have you. Um, especially with panoptics and all that stuff. It's a very, very more powerful uh, transducer setup. Uh, what do we got? So, includes the transducer with chirp. Uh, it has 1,600 foot depth for the sonar. Uh, you have the waypoint map, eco map. It does split screen, so you can show two things at once on the small three and a half inch screen. Um, smooth scaling, bullshit. <clears throat> sonar history rewind, whoop de doo uh, tilt swivel mount, which is, you know, just standard little tiny plastic mount. Um, built-in flash, so it's got the flasher. And speed data display directly on screen. So you'll get your depth, your speed, your temperature, um, all that stuff. So that's pretty good. It's not bad. There's a picture. Here they've got your waypoint and your 77 hertz chirp image right there. On this side, you're looking at, okay, here we got the... The 200, a fair bit more, you know, more pronounced. And then you've got your lower grade, lower uh, hertz. So basically use your low hertz when you're just scanning around, looking for just structure, looking for any kind of an object. Then you'll bump it up to the 200 hertz here, and that will give you a far clearer picture of uh, the, the fish balls, uh, bait fish, or hopefully bass or tarpon or whatever you happen to be fishing for. Um, and then you got your waypoint select up here. So that's good. It's good that it does have the split screen. Again, this is a three and a half inch screen. If you are uh, a glass wearing person, contact, this is not for people without good, good vision because it's a very tiny screen. And, uh, you know, you're going to have to learn. But it also does have flash. So there's your flasher right there, your traditional uh, way to read your sonars. Not bad. Worth the investment. I don't know. Now, we'll get to the brass tacks of what they price this at. Off the ball, not knowing, not having looked it up yet, I'm going to say with this iteration, um, looking to see if there's a, uh, a date on here to give me if it's like a 2017, 2018, 2019, who knows. Uh, it doesn't say anywhere in specific. 
I want to say this is in the maybe $110 range, uh, you know, on sale anywhere. They have it listed $120, $10 above what I'd estimate. I'll give, uh, you know, I'll look into it. I'll see whether or not I can buy that, but yeah, you never know. Again, it is a, it's a striker. It's not any of the more modern renditions. Uh, Fuzi XP3 Realtree Mako for $50. Never worry about your phone overheating. Oh, I know what this is. Okay, this, not specific to, to, to anglers, but it is a very important thing for anglers to have, especially if you're a YouTuber and you use your phone for a lot of your data, uh, for your, a lot of your, um, you know, uh, using it to, to find maps for topography under, for your waterways and what have you. So the Fuzi, it's this little sleeve that you put your, your smartphone in, and it actually, it's a thermal cooling agent. It keeps the sun uh, from beating down on your, on your uh, electronics, keeps them cooler in the sun, basically. Like, it's like a sun shirt for your phone. Um, I have seen these in the past, and they are pretty pricey. I don't recall what I saw them listed as advertised. Um, they are water resistant for like minor rain and stuff. It is, n I don't know if, yes, floating. So it's heat proof, cold proof, preserves your battery life again by keeping it at, at a steady constant ambient temperature. It doesn't let it get super cold to kill your battery. It doesn't let it get super hot to, to fry your electronics. Um, it is padded for dropping drop protection and it floats. So if this was to flo you know, fall out of your kayak uh, into you know, regular shallow water, you can easily uh, collect it quickly before it sinks. One year warranty, not bad. Um, do, 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 never worry about your phone overheating in the sun where it's yet sinking to the bottom of the river. Multiple attachment points, the internal stash pocket uh, for your hunting license or fishing license. Hunting license though, hunting, see? Uh, credit cards and cash. You don't have to carry a bulky wallet in the thick plastic hard case. Your phone, wonder, uh, yeah, I put it all in the thing. Okay, so it's basically a little sleeve that you put your, uh, your smartphone in, carries it around, protects it, keeps it waterproof, allows you also to store some other vital information while you're out camping, hunting, or, yes, fishing. Cold Steel Kudo Light Knife. So, we have a Kudo Light Cold Steel four and a quarter inch, uh, two millimeter blade thick, little knife. So we'll pop this open. So it's got a decent little clip. It's a lock back, four and a quarter inches. It's got a picture of not a fish on it. It's a chintzy little cheap, you know, pocket knife, plastic, plastic handle, not wood, very thin wall construction aluminum, not impressive whatsoever. However, and it's not a locking, you can fold it, it'll depress that spring, it's not really a locking mechanism to prevent it from cutting back, so watch yourself because you could cut your finger severely. Um, I will say, all things considered, it's one step up from one of the like little knickknack stores that I had in my resort area uh, where I grew up, where you go in and you get you know five and dime style stuff. Um, Cold Steel's nine dollars. I can buy that. They're not trying to hawk this. It's some thirty-five dollar you know um, you know quality knife. It's it's obviously not a Gerber. Um, nine dollars. Okay. Classic Kudo ring lock knife. Every aspect except the uh, heavy spring to keep the blade open, uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a large size pocket knife. Yes, decent to have in your tackle box uh, for cutting line, uh, cutting your net. If something happens to your net, ship rope, say you, you know, you're tied off and something happens, you got to cut the rope or you have to retie your anchor. Uh, easy to cut your anchor line, spring lines, etc. Good to have, certainly not stainless steel. So don't expect this to be rust resistant for $9. It is what it is. Fuzzy's quick attach straps. So we have again going with the same brand as the thermal protector. XP3 series multi point attachments. These are just little Velcro strips that you can use to attach items, um, you know, to whatever. It's a mounting system. Uh, you can attach, 
you know, you can attach your Fousey to stuff. I would use these also as a good way to attach, say, your fishing rod holders or your lures so that they don't, you know, go flying around easy for transport. You get three to a pack, $9 for these three pack of straps. Duke Cannon Body Knuckles Travel Size. Oh, excuse me, Bloody Knuckles. Body Knuckles. So, here we're going to get into this caveat of what Fish Vault is doing. Hunt Vault, Fish Vault, as of now, in this iteration, this box, Hunter's Hall, they had things where they would send items that you wouldn't ne ne necessarily uh, expect. One of which being what's in this bag on my right, which is snacks, and especially uh, Hunter's Hall. Hunter's Hall used to always have a little protein bar or a, or a granola bar or something like that in their boxes, which I thought was nifty. And in fact, I was hoping Angler's Hall would have carried that tradition on. One of the things that they had was honey stingers, which were these little wafers, and they're friggin' delicious. <laughs> in fact, I used to, I can get them at uh, my local uh, drugstore, um, my Eckerd Pharmacy. They have the honey stingers. They're expensive. They're about a dollar a piece, but uh, they're delicious. And they used to throw these little snacks in as a monthly snack, and they get these companies to send you healthy, uh, you know, protein-rich, carb-rich hunting and camping and hiking kind of things into the uh, hunter's hall. Uh, so when you're out there in your stand deer hunting or you're out camping or whatever, you'd have a little protein pack in the box that you could pop back and enjoy. Something else that they had, and in this case, Bloody Knuckles, which is a, uh, it, it's, it's a balm for your hands. Hand repair balm. So fragrance free. Cardboard on the top. Oh, it's sealed. I really did not want to open this yet. I'm not going to open it. But basically, it's a, it's a salve, a cream that you put on your hands to help. Um, I'm sure it's probably high in lanolin. Um, so you have glycerol, stearic acid, uh, butrium, shea butter, uh, wax, obviously, emulsified with a uh, uh, little bit of alcohol, uh, jabba jabba seed oil, lanolin. Yeah, so it's basically just a moisturizing balm. Um, is this good for an angler? Absolutely. Uh, every angler, you know, should have a little tiny pack. I, I always kept a little jar of bag balm uh, because, you know, you're, you're fishing, you're cutting your hands with uh, line, you know, between mono and, and braid. Um, you're in and out of the water, especially if you're ice fishing. Your hands can get very raw. In the sun, they can dry out. So, yeah... Mind you, you have to, I mean, me personally, I wear, I put on the balm very thinly and then I wear gloves over top. So I'm trying not to contact the baits with a balm. So as far as an angler is concerned, you have to be very cautious of this. If you're going to put this on your hand, understand any scent, residue, taste, pheromone that might come from the beeswax that's in here or the lanolin is going to then project onto your soft plastic or your hard bait as you're tying the knots and, and, and handling it, and that then could leave a film that could translate down to your fishing. So is this specifically angler? Heck no. Is it good for anglers? Yeah. I mean, it's good to have things to calm, um, you know, uh, sore hands and, and rash and, and things like that, and, and make sure your hands stay. I'm not a good hand model. I'm not a good judge. I have terrible hands. But <laughs> rough, disgusting hands. But nevertheless... Um, prevent chapping and drying out and stuff like that is nice to have. They have this, again, $8. So $1 cheaper than the other two things. And finally, again for $8, like I said, this is a little different. I have seen in the Hunt Vault things like oatmeal. Uh, you know, these are smaller niche... Um, uh, I'm trying to think of the word. Um, but like your, you know, like your specialty brew beers... These are these kind of specialty companies. They're very, more, they're very much natural. It's not the big Kellogg's conglomerate. But you have from Peak Refuel, Mountain Berry Granola, wholesome granola and rice milk with strawberries, blueberries, and raspberries. So basically you have this little pouch of granola snack. Um, obviously good for breakfast. Um, 
put a cup, put it in a, it's just basically open pouch, pour in cup, add eight ounces cold water to pouch, shake to combine, open pouch and enjoy. So this is technically a, um, two servings per bag. So that moniker of open it up, fill it with water, shake it up. You got two servings, you need to split it in half. It should have been two pouches. Nevertheless, um, yeah, you open the pouch, you add in eight ounces of cold water just to moisturize the granola, make it more palatable. Shake up the pouch, let it sit for a little bit, and then you can spoon it out and enjoy it. Um, basically, it's, it's 13 grams of protein as sort of like a breakfast thing. It's a meal in a bag. Um, healthy for you, you're out. Is this fishing? Not necessarily. Is it nice to have? I'd say, yeah, throw it on the boat. If you're out in a tournament and you're on your break in the middle of the tournament, here's something. Grab yourself a bottle of cold water, throw it in there, stir it up, and while you're waiting, you can do that. Me, personally, in a tournament, I'm not taking snacks on my break. I'm retying. I'm checking my line. I'm making sure my reels are all in function. I'm fixing things that failed. Um, replanning and assessing uh, all during my break. Uh, the things I can do that I can't literally cast. But uh, that being said... It's nice to see. This is something that I kind of wanted, not in this big of a package, but little tiny snacks, granola bars, um, little tiny packages of things like this, um, you know, uh, fruit roll-up kind of things. I wanted to see that in the Angler's Hall. It didn't translate over from Hunter's Hall, but it's kind of nifty to see here, and I honestly, you might hate me, you might not. This might, you know, not be palatable to a lot of you out there, because I am very critical of these boxes, I hope you understand. But this is something I'm not mad about. I don't mind the granola. Overall, the garment, I'm happy it showed up. I wasn't expecting a top of the line. I'm very pleased in what I got because it, it lends to what I was anticipating. Granola, I'm totally down with that. Um, the, uh, the little satchel for the phone, yeah, that I can, I can buy into that. The lamp, the, the hand balm, the knife, and the little multi-purpose straps, that's sort of filler to me. Uh, straps are good, and I don't mind them. Uh, as far as the hand, uh, the hand salve and the knife, I could have done without the knife. I'd rather had a higher quality product. Uh, again, all kinds of things that, that are angler specific. A pair of pliers, a pair of uh, uh, you know needle, you know needle nose pliers that are multi-use. They can be camping, but they can also help. Uh, you know, remove fish hooks, etc. Uh, I would love to see Fish Vault come up with a proper pair of either CUDA or some good quality high strength uh, set of wire dikes for cutting fish hooks. Because anybody who's ever had a large fish hook go in their arm and out the other side, and you can't back that barb out, you've got to cut it off. A good, sturdy, High grade, expensive, high quality. You have to pay. This is this is you know your health on the line here. Uh, that you can operate one handed. I would love to see the ratcheting style. I've had one in the past. I long since lost it in travels, but it it was just like you know you're ratcheting hedge clippers as you cleave it, as you cleave down on the on the blade. It would lock and then it would ratchet back and it would clip and clip and clip and slowly it would just slice right through um, through the metal. I had a pair of those that I used to keep for specifically that because I could open it up with one hand if, if God forbid, I had the emergency. You can clamp it onto the, onto the barb, lock it, open it, lock it, open it, because you can't necessarily have all the strength in one hand, especially when you're in pain and kind of depending on where on your body you hooked yourself, you may not be able to get the back of your head and be able to use both hands to get strength. So being able to click, 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 ratchet it down until it severs that barb and then you can pull the hook out and clear yourself and go off and be treated you know get it cleaned up get the wound cleaned and, and sanitized that would be awesome so a fish vault's paying attention look into that it's definitely worth putting in one of these uh these fish vaults hopefully that's something we might see come uh you know june july august especially when you have musky season i mean there were some muskies up so uh and anybody who swings musky baits knows the size of those hooks. You don't want one of those going through your palm. That being said, drop in the comments below what your opinions of the April box is. 
Uh, I appreciate all of you for, you know, commenting. I've tried to keep abreast. I always try to answer as soon as possible. Sometimes I don't get to them. I, there's a few that have been like a week. I just didn't see the comment. They, they get drafted into that spam folder on YouTube. Uh, but as soon as I go through, periodically I check through, and I definitely look and, and I respond. Um, so I apologize for late responses to those, those queries and questions and comments. For all of you out there, I appreciate you spending this little bit of time with me. I wasn't expecting it to be 20 minutes long. Um, but uh, thank you very much for stopping by. Like, share, and subscribe as always. And for me to you, tight lines, I'll catch you on the next cast. <laughs>